In this section, we start with looking at sampling distributions and estimators. The sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of all values of the statistic when all possible samples of the same size n are taken from the population. Here are some graphs of the general behaviors of sampling distributions. They include the mean, variance, and proportion. This fun little exercise we will do in class. Here are a few more graphs of the sampling distributions from specific results involving mean, variance, and proportion. The sampling distributions for mean, variance, and proportion all target the actual mean, variance, and proportion. The mean, variance, and proportion are unbiased estimators. Unbiased estimators tend to target the corresponding population parameters. Median, range, and standard deviation are examples of biased estimators. Now let's look at an example of a biased estimator, the median. This example involves number of people in a household, and the numbers are 1, 3, and 8. Let's find the median for each of the nine samples. In this case, finding the median for each sample, we just add the two values and divide by two. The probability of randomly selecting each of these is 1 out of 9.
Now we find the mean of the medians. If this was an unbiased estimator, the mean of medians should be close to the actual mean, which is 3 in this case. We get 4 for the mean and medians. Not very close to the actual, right? A reminder, we know the actual median is 3 since it is in the middle of our sample space of 1, 3, and 8. Really quick, let's add all these probabilities to verify this is a probability distribution. Again, we can see that the population median and our mean of medians are not very close, right? Now, let's look at the central limit theorem. This says for a population with any distribution, the distribution of the sample means approaches a normal distribution. These three principles are essential to using the central limit theorem. Here's a picture of what this looks like. When applying the central limit theorem, we use our regular z-score formula for individual values and this other one for a sample of values. Now let's do an example. Here we want to know the probability that one tire will last over 42,000 miles. Since it's just one tire, we use the regular z-score formula to convert it to the standard normal distribution.
Now we can rewrite this using the z-score notation, p of z being greater than or equal to 1. Pressing second, vars on our calculator, then scrolling down to normal CDF and using 1.00 as our left z-score and 10 as our right z-score, we get 0.1587 or about 15.87% chance that a single tire will last over 42,000 miles. For part B, which probably makes more sense to calculate, we want to find the probability that all four tires will last over 42,000 miles. So we use the other z-score formula since we have a sample of values. Writing this out, we end up with a z-score of 2.00. So now we can rewrite this using z-scores and use our wonderful calculator to figure it out. Using 2.00 as our left z-score and 10 as our right z-score, and we get 0 0.0228 or 2.28 percent chance that all four tires will last over 42,000 miles. Another example. Here 
Here we want the probability that a group of 9 students will have an average of less than 80. Since this is a sample of values, we use the other z-score formula to convert this to a z-score. We get a z-score of 3.00, so now we can rewrite this as p of z being less than 3.00. And then use our calculator. And we end up with 0 .0013 chance that their average test scores will be less than 80. A Macy's example that involves spending money. Part A, we want the probability that a customer will spend over $85. Since it is an individual value, we use the regular z-score formula. we get negative 0.75 as the z-score. Using our calculator to figure this out for us, And we get 0.7733 as the probability that a customer will spend over $85. Part B, we want the probability that on average, four customers spend over $85. So we use the other z-score formula to get the z-score.
and we get negative 1.50 as our z-score. So use the calculator to evaluate. And we get 0.9332 as the probability that four customers on average will spend over $85.